Welcome back to console. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell. Uh, that way you're notified on every new console episode, which they do come out every week. So if you don't like this episode, you might like next week's or the week after that. Um, in this week's episode, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, I started reviewing JavaScript execution contexts, and uh, that led me to another post by the same author about a uh, whether JavaScript is a compiled or interpreted language. And I thought um, the order would be better if we went over this one first, because we've been talking a lot about compilers and programming languages before this. Uh, so I figured let's review that, and then we'll get into the JavaScript execution contexts next week. Um, while I was reviewing this one, I actually found a book that this author found, which informed their decision about whether you know JavaScript was a compiled or interpreted language. And so I kind of end up reviewing the book, or at least that chapter of the book, or that section of that chapter of the book uh, in the second half of the video, because it's got a lot of really good information in there as well. Uh, as usual, I'll link to both the blog post and the book. Um, that's everything. Let's jump right in. Okay, here is Tapa's blog post. Um, we're not going to do any coding in this particular video. You can see uh, a little bit of code I did from the previous video. I actually recorded these a little bit out of order because I found this post while I was going through a, another post of Tapas's, uh, in which he mentions this one, and I thought, oh, this one's a really good one because it also builds on what we've been doing in previous videos as well. Um, so in this particular post, he's trying to settle the debate about whether JavaScript is an interpreted or a compiled language. So in the previous videos, we've been creating all these compilers. I kept talking about compilers and all these other things. Well, there's a different class of, of programming languages that are interpreted. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details about like what a compiled language is or what a com uh, an interpreted language is. Um, well, I might actually later because I read a, a book that has a lot more JavaScript information in it. Um, but for this particular section, uh, we're just going to talk about whether you know, JavaScript is interpreted or compiled. Um, right now he's talking about things we've already seen in previous videos, right? You've got the, the tokenizer, the parsing, and the code generation. You can see he's talking about ASTs as well, which is things I've mentioned in the past. Uh, he's talking about the tokenizing, the parsing, the lexing, you know, kind of goes, it goes along with parsing. In this case, we talked a lot about lexing, but you could consider, you know, the parsing aspect, you know, roughly the same as the, the lexing stuff that we've done in the past. Um, he's got, one thing I liked about a lot of his posts is he's got a lot of these little uh, GIFs throughout the post, kind of like illustrating what he's talking about here. Uh, you can see here, we've talked about this all right before. Uh, you've got the source code, it, it gets ripped apart, tokenized. We wrote a tokenizer. Uh, it gets lexed, it gets parsed, it turns into an AST, and then eventually, you know, some code gen is actually generated. Um, another good thing I like about his post is he's got a lot of the like, really interesting tools, which we'll see in the next video as well. Um, this particular t uh, tool he's showing us is the AST Explorer, and I kind of play around with that a little bit uh, in this video as well. Uh, basically what it does is it allows you to write any code that this tool uh, has functionality for. In this case, we're looking at the JavaScript one. It lets you to, allows you to write code and see what the AST for that code uh, actually is. Uh, so here, I, I, as I've said many times throughout the videos, I like to start with very simple cases first. So you can see, I keep talking about these ASTs. Well, this is what the AST looks like for just a simple let t equals 10 in JavaScript, right? And then here I'm changing it you know, to a const. I want to see kind of what changes if it's if the value variable is a const versus not a const. It turns out like nothing much changes other than the kind of the variable, right? Uh, but uh, this is a super cool tool in, in my opinion. I think you know I might actually end up using it if the language I'm coding and actually supports this or is supported by this tool. Um, sometimes you get into very like complex compiler situations. Um, and it might be useful to figure out like what the AST is looking at uh, for the code you're writing in order to like see why maybe something isn't getting resolved or uh, why generic isn't getting isn't working perhaps or you know uh, a lot of programming is like if you're doing it correctly right is like really advanced uh, compiler tricks basically you're taking advantage of all the latest uh, compiler functionalities that the compiler developers are providing you so uh, being able to see what the AST looks like for particular lines of code uh, is a super, super uh, useful thing in my opinion. Um, but yeah, this is a super useful tool. I wanted to leave it in the videos because I wanted to point it out. Like, 
you could do the same thing for pretty much any language. Uh, the other language of interest to me at least was Scala, so I checked the Scala AST Explorer as well that that particular tool supplies. So here he's making the claim that uh, JavaScript is a compiled language rather than an interpreted one. Um, and I would say he kind of makes the claim quite nicely in my opinion, right? He goes through and explains all the reasons why he thinks JavaScript is a compiled language. Um, he also links to that to a book that I mentioned earlier in the video that uh, I'll kind of be reviewing later in this video as well that I think makes the case in more detail here. Um, but yeah, effectively he's saying this is, you know, JavaScript is a compiled language. And that's basically all he's saying. He's, he's explaining why, you know, because it has a parser, a lexer, and it generates uh, compiled code, machine code. It ends up getting interpreted by a, a, a virtual machine, right? Similar to like a JVM or something like that. But I mean, that just further bolsters the case that it's a compiled language because it acts very similar to Java, right? Which everyone considers a compiled language itself. Um, so I left this particular part of the video in be mostly as a build up into the later part of the video where uh, we're going to talk a lot more in a lot more depth about like, JavaScript and why it's considered uh, compiled. But I thought because uh, this part has the AST Explorer tool, it, it would be worth leaving that in. But here you can see I'm finding the book that I really wanted to talk about here um, and discuss here. And so we're going to dive into it now. So yeah, this, this book, I think it might still be in progress. To be honest, I didn't look too far into the details. Just this particular section uh, was a super useful section leading up to you know the blog post that we just reviewed. Um, the book is super useful. Like I'm probably going to start recommending it to new developers uh, who are writing JavaScript code because he goes into a lot of the details. It's often the case, though, like you kind of have to know, uh, you have to have written a little bit of code and you know done a couple of projects in order to understand why it's important to understand why whether a language is compiled or interpreted or understand like the internals of a language. You have to get into some really sticky positions and write some really bad bugs before you start actually caring. Like you have some skin in the game as to why you would care about this. Uh, so it might be more of an intermediate level book. You know, after someone's got maybe a year of like coding experience, they might want to go and review this book and understand like why uh, or how JavaScript functions uh, internally. Uh, anyway, what he's saying is, here is he's saying like there's a difference between interpreted slash, you know, scripted executions and compiled executions, right? In, in one case, the language you just run by line by line, right? You just executing the the lines of the code one by one by one by one and in the compiled case which we've written a little bit of those in the previous video right you take it you translate it into a tree you read that tree and you turn it into actual like machine code right um he he makes the case that you know javascript is often considered interpreted because you're you're packaging the source code up which is what you do with interpreted scripted languages right because scripted languages don't Get translated into like a binary that you can share or deploy, deploy to production or something like that. You have to like no kidding deploy the code. Uh, he said he makes the claim that like that might be why people are getting confused and saying like JavaScript is not a compiled language when in fact, uh, as we'll find later, it actually is. Uh, he's making the case right here. So JS is a parsed language, but is it compiled? Right. So it's it's already one step in order to call yourself. Uh, compiled languages you have to be kind of be a parsed language rather than an interpreted language in this case javascript is a parsed language uh, we talked about that in the blog post earlier you know there's a parser that goes through and reads and turns grades in ast and all that other good stuff so right here is where he makes the case uh that i made in the, the blog post we were reviewing that you know javascript has a a, a vm right it's so it will take that parsed out tree the ast and it will go and, and interpret that AST in a virtual machine using just-in-time compilation, right? Which is exactly how uh, Java functions, right? So he even says something along the lines of like, it's surprising how in common Java and JavaScript are uh, because they're both VM-driven languages. Uh, so again, it like further makes the case that JavaScript is a compiled language. You could consider it a compiled language. Uh, part three here, uh, where he's saying, uh, the reason this matters, that GS is, is compiled, is because you're informed of static errors 
before. I forgot to mention that before when I was talking about like the comparison between interpreted language and uh, compiled language, right? The reason you care whether something is compiled or interpreted is you get uh, run, uh, compile time checking on your code. So you'll catch bugs before you actually go to run the code. If it's an interpreted language, you won't catch those bugs until you're actually running the code, which means you're going to be running the code in production before you find out like, oh, I have a bug on branch five million of my code that I didn't catch that a compiler would probably catch for you, right? So that's why this is like kind of an important debate, why programmers care about whether something is interpreted or compiled. Um, right now he's talking about WASM stuff. Uh, I'm not going to get into that just because we've already done a little bit of a video on the Rust stuff and the, the motivation of this whole video is more to talk about, you know, compilation versus uh, interpreted programming languages and not necessarily WASM, but, you know, that is where things are heading in, in the web right now, it is uh, WebAssembly. Everybody's moving in that direction right now, which is why he's pointing it out as a, an alternative to JavaScript. So this this was an interesting section of the chapter. Um, I keep seeing use strict mode like all over the place in some of the JavaScript I'm writing at work. To be honest, I don't write a lot of JavaScript at work, which is kind of a shame. I really like the JavaScript programming language. Uh, but I do a lot of back-end development instead. So I keep seeing this, and I keep using it, not knowing like what I'm doing. I just go, oh, this must be something important. Use strict must be important. Um, but I hadn't ever like, dug into why, because I don't have enough time to like, go figure out the intricacies of all the details of all the programming languages I'm writing in. Um, so here, here he gives an explanation of like what use strict is, why it's important to use use strict, and all that other stuff. Uh, another thing he points out that I wasn't even aware of is you can actually use strict only at the function level. So if you're like in the process of migrating an entire code base to use strict, uh, you can put it into different functions as you're writing new code and not have to migrate the entire uh, syntax over to use strict. Uh, he does point out that if you do that, you can't use it globally as well. So you kind of have to pick pick whether you're going to do it at the function level or at the global level or not. But uh, obviously it's important to just like define it at the beginning, right, from now on. He said the only reason why they don't just move everything directly, you do, rip the band-aid off and make everybody migrate to using strict uh, syntax is because they have to maintain backwards compatibility, right? So all your new projects, you should be using strict at the top of all your JavaScript. That will do it for this week's episode of Console. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell after you subscribe so that you get notifications every time a new episode is released. So... JavaScript is compiled, maybe? <laughs> uh, at least from the, the information that we reviewed this week, uh, seems to me to be a, a closed case. Although I'm s almost positive I'm gonna get uh, comments under this video of people calling me an idiot for thinking that JavaScript is a compiled language, but uh, based on the information we reviewed, it seems to be an open and shut case to me at least. Um, so for next week's episode, we're going to continue to uh, review this blog author that kind of got me reading this book that we ended up checking out uh, this week's episode. In the next episode, we're going to look at uh, JavaScript execution contexts. I will see you then.